and invited me to be a lecturer for the Tombaugh uh, Club meeting. And I checked the list of previous lecturers, and it's an impressive list of people and a lot of interesting subjects. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be a presenter and be added to the list of the Tombaugh lecture series. So I'm going to dive into the partial phase phenomena now. And these are all the things that are related to the sun being slowly covered by the moon. And some are unique to eclipses. So the partial phase phenomena, one of the most detailed, hard to understand, but fascinating thing is the change in ambient lighting. So I showed you this Lux curve before. And during an eclipse, our pupils will dilate. But that's not the most important thing for our um, adaptation, our dark adaptation before an eclipse. Because the eclipse happens over an hour and a half, our eye brain system has an amazing ability to dark adapt for the changing lighting. Now we have two types of cells in the back of our retina, the cone cells, which are for bright light and color vision because they absorb at three wavelengths of light, but they require a lot of photons to fire. They need a lot of energy to fire. And then we have the rod cells, which are our nighttime visions. They absorb at one wavelength, so they're black and white. And there's a lot more of those, but they can fire with just a couple of photons, so they're much more sensitive to photons. Well, an interesting thing happens during an eclipse. Because it's happening so slowly and we have such a long time to dark adapt, we can spend time in this period of vision called the mesopic zone. The mesopic zone is a zone of lux where our cones are no longer functioning effectively because there's not a lot of photons and our rods want to start to kick in because it's getting towards night vision. So this is the time about five minutes before totality where our colors in our surroundings become desaturated and everything around us looks like we've just put on a pair of light gray sunglasses and things get a silvery cast to them. And this is called the Purkinje effect. The Purkinje effect happens because those cones are not functioning well and we're starting to turn into night vision. So all of the colors get blander and it gets this gray hue. Now you can't photograph the Purkinje effect because the Purkinje effect is biologic because it's the switching from cones to rods. Camera color sensors don't change their color sensitivity with a decrease in lux, but you can, I can fake it in Photoshop to show you kind of what it looks like. The bright reds become more saturated, desaturated, and everything looks like it kind of gets a gray cast to it. It's very eerie and very weird, and it's really something you have to experience. But you have to know what you're looking for because it's only going to happen for about three to five minutes before totality at second contact, and you have to be aware of it. Now, I learned something important between 2017 and 2019. So in 2017, we saw an amazing Purkinje effect. The gray effects and the desaturation were astounding. In 2019, we didn't. And I thought about it later. And the reason is to see the Purkinje effect, you have to have target color. So in 2017, it was a summer eclipse. We were on a green field. There were a lot of bright summertime clothes around and bright tents around and, and things like that. But in 2019, we were in a winter eclipse in Argentina on a dirt field and everybody's wearing bland winter clothes. So there's not a lot of target to see the Purkinje effect happen because you need the target colors. So that's why in 2024, I recommend you tell all your friends and family and yourselves to wear a combination of green and red clothes. It may look ridiculous, but it'll give you target for the Purkinje effect. Now, there's another interesting thing about the lighting at the end of an eclipse, which I haven't heard people talk about. The, the color temperature in Kelvin of the sun has been measured, and we know the center of the sun is really bright, and it measures approximately 6,300 Kelvin. But we know the limb of the sun is less bright and it shifts to the red. So I was thinking about, well, what happens on Earth when we are lit only by the crescent phase? Does that change that lighting effect that we, or does it add to the problems with seeing the Purkinje effect? 
Well, I have an observatory in my backyard. And before the 2019 eclipse, I did some experiments. I put in eyepieces that gave me a very small field of view and a spectrometer. And I measured, uh, again, not calibrated just to get gross measurements. I measured the center of the sun and I got this nice flat color spectrum through a full spectrum glass um, solar filter. And then I moved the telescope off the sun and slowly eased it back to the limb. And when I started getting data at the limb, sure enough, the blue was decreased and there was, there was a shift to the red, which would make sense for the limb of the sun. And then when I went to Argentina, I brought a data logger that logged in real time uh, the frequencies of blue, green, and red. And what was amazing about that, I had it pointed at the sun, for the entire time of the eclipse, these three lines did not change at all. I mean, the percentage that the data logger was recording was rock stable. But at two minutes before totality, at this crescent phase, look what happened. The red starts going up and the blue and green starts going down. So this was data that proved another weird thing about the lighting in the last two minutes before totality. On Earth, we are actually bathed with light that's more to the red spectrum.